Hi guys, first of all, if you hear some noise in the background, it's my dogs. They are, um, they have cabin fever and I don't blame them. We're in Michigan, so yeah, we don't get a whole lot of nice weather during this time of year. But anyway, this is going to be a how to find your brushes um, tutorial. So Lightroom can be really confusing. If you can't find your brushes, it's not your fault and don't feel bad for asking because, I mean, really, they have made quite a difficult interface and even importing the brushes can be difficult. If you need a tutorial on how to import your brushes, I have one, um, just let me know and I will tag you. But after you have them imported and you've followed all the steps, a lot of people are messaging me and saying, hey, I followed the tutorial and I still don't have any brushes. You actually do, they're just ridiculously hard to find. So, especially if you're not used to Lightroom Classic or you've just updated. So. Um, when you open Lightroom, come over to your basic panel here, and right above basic is this little circle. Okay, this is where, how you're gonna access your brushes. I, like, I'm really not surprised that people can't find these because this is ridiculous. Like, who would ever think to click there if you're not familiar with it? So anyway, click this circle, and that will open up your um, masking panel. Now, the next step is gonna be to choose whether you wanna use a brush, a linear, or a radial. Um, if you're having trouble finding your brushes, you're probably, you know, not going to want to use these two right away. That's a little bit more advanced. So if you're just starting, um, you're probably looking for a radial because I tell me people to use the Make It Pop filter all the time and this is how you do it. So um, click radial and then it's going to bring up this little box up here. This is going to show you after you've applied your radial and I'll just go ahead and do one. This is going to show you, see that, um, where you've applied your mask. So here's your brushes. You're going to click where it says, whatever it says there. I'm not sure what it defaults to, but you're going to click that at the top, and you're going to scroll down and see all your brushes here, and they should all be in there. If for some reason you've followed the import tutorial and you still don't see your brushes, um, and you do have to restart your Lightroom after you import, if you restart and still don't see your brushes, I have another way to get them to you. Just DM me and I will get them to you. Um, but that's it. So then you click one of these. I'm not going to click one because I don't want to give the brushes away. I think they're actually really good, unique brushes. Um, and that's how you do it. So they're not lost. They're just freaking hidden by Lightroom because Lightroom sucks. Um, but let me also show you while I'm here how I use the Make It Pop filter. Um, I use Make It Pop on... I'm going to say all of my images. I created it to work with the presets. So I have the presets designed in such a way that they look best if you do use this filter. Um, if you find that you're applying a preset and it's looking a little bit flat or it's missing some detail, um, it's because you need to really utilize these um, the, at least the Make It Pop filter. You don't have to use the others, but at least use this one. So this is how I would do it. Right now I don't have any masks on this image at all. Um, and I've just gone ahead and applied O2 and lifted the exposure. So what I would do is take, click on the radial, and then I'm just going to use exposure so you can kind of see where I'm putting it. Um, but you would click Make It Pop in the menu, and then we'll make this real, real noticeable. I would never actually do this, but I'm just, just so you can see where I'm putting it. So I'm going to draw it right over the subject. And you can draw it a little bit bigger than the subject because you want the mask to touch the whole subject. So if I bring it down, you can see even better. See how feathered out that is? So if I draw it big, it's going to basically get her whole body. If I was to draw it smaller, let me show you. And you can just drag these in if you want to make them smaller. Um, if I was to make it smaller and put it just around her, it wouldn't be getting, see where it's, I'm going to make this again really obvious, see where it's not, it's kind of missing, you know, out here. I want it to get her whole body, so I make it a little bit bigger. This looks ridiculous, obviously, I'm just trying to make it so you can see what I'm doing. But this is where I would put the Make It Pop filter. Um, and that's just going to really finish your images off and give them a nice polish. It's going to give you the pop that you want in your images. And then there's one other thing I know that a lot of you have seen me um, show this already, but it's such a good tool that I'm going to show it again because I know that out of the 2,300 of you or whatever, some of you haven't seen it, so I want to show you. 
Um, first of all, you need Photoshop for this next step. Don't be intimidated by Photoshop. I'm gonna show you just one thing in Photoshop. It's super quick, it's super easy, and I promise it's not overwhelming. Um, and if you have the $10 a month Adobe um, photography plan, which most of you do, um, this is free. You can download Photoshop for free. So after you've downloaded Photoshop, um, come to Photo, Edit In, and then Edit In Photoshop. And it's gonna take your um, raw image into Photoshop, so it's not decreasing the quality or anything like that. Um, pull it into Photoshop and it's gonna let you keep on doing your edits here. This is always my last step. Um, I never export from Lightroom. I always export from Photoshop, even on weddings, even if I have you know 800 images to deliver. I do this with every image because it makes such a big difference. I think it's worth it. Um, and I'm a perfectionist, so I don't mind going the extra little mile with this. But Okay, so once you're in Photoshop, come up to Window, and just make sure that you have Adjustments clicked. Nothing else, don't worry about anything else, just make sure Adjustments is clicked. If you have Adjustments clicked, you're gonna see this box here. Um, second from the left-hand side on the top is the Levels um, button. So just click that, it looks like a little crown. And then the first thing you'll see pop up is the histogram, and then you're gonna click this little um, caution symbol. And the caution symbol is telling you that your levels could be better. So click that, it sometimes will do a little adjusting on its own. Now you have three uh, markers here that are showing you your blacks, your midtones, and your whites. We're only concerned with the blacks and the whites. So you're gonna take this far right little pointer here and you're just gonna drag it in to the end of the histogram. You don't have to drag it in all the way to the end. Sometimes I'll just pull it in just a touch. Um, and then same thing with the blacks. Drag it in until it looks right to you, you know what I mean, until you've got the pop that you want in your image. And what this does is expands your dynamic range. Um, so it's, you know, it's making, it's making your images pop and it's basically giving you the best dynamic range for your um, for your image. Some camera bodies give you a lot of dynamic range straight out of camera, and some don't. Um, the Canon 6D and the Canon Rebels especially are really low on dynamic range, and if you have one of those cameras, please do this. This is gonna make the biggest difference for you. So once you've adjusted it um, the way you want and it looks good to you, Come down here to where it says layers. There's a couple different tabs up here, but just come to layers and it's gonna show you, um, this is a new layer that it's made. You can click that little eyeball icon off and see the difference. I'm gonna guess that on a screen recording you can't see the difference when I click on and off, but in real life I definitely can. Um, so you just, so now we need to make this one layer again so that we can save it. So we come up to the very top um, right hand side these there's like four little horizontal lines and click that and then you're gonna come down to flatten image click that now that's gonna pull everything together and make it one solid image and then I have another tutorial where I show you how to make a finishing action that will save your image for print in the right format it applies professional sharpening and it makes you know gets your image ready to you know save as or export or however you want to save um, but that's it. it yeah if you use the make it pop filter and you guys you know use this little levels trick which again after you've done it a couple times is super duper quick um, I think that's gonna solve you know any problems that you're having and honestly not many people are having problems you guys are posting incredible work and yeah I love seeing it and I'm just so glad you guys are all here I love this group I love you guys, and that's it. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm always here to help. Okay, bye.